Ah, just another draft physics presentation. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so some more comments, I guess. And maybe some drawing. So throw in something you know, for the children and whatnot. Uh, so Joshua. Um, a Nobel Prize, question mark. You can't even publish a fucking theory. So again, I, I don't really need to publish it in your way. I can publish it any way. Point is, is it's been explained in videos pretty extensively. Um, you know, you either get it, you don't get it. Um, you know, I, I think it's the truth. I think it will be proven to be the truth eventually. And... Um, if it's okay with you, I mean, I'd like it to be a record on, of your life that, you know, you didn't think so. And you didn't think so for reasons apparently you can't articulate beyond saying, I don't like it's ugly or something. It isn't written the right way. I can't read a theory unless it's written the right way. Some kind of crap like that. Um, you don't have any math supporting your shit. Again, I don't need any math. Because, guess what? Math is just a definition of relationships, and it isn't a definition of causes. So, again, the math doesn't have really much to do with it. You can think math is physics, but it really isn't. Physics is an actual mechanical thing that happens. If I made a Rube Goldberg machine, you know, with bowling balls fall down and hit, I don't know, pigeons, and the pigeons fly, and they hit something else, and a bell rings... You don't need math to understand what's going on. And it's sort of going to make it not look like anything. Because the math really isn't going to show you how it happens. Uh, neither you provide a coherent understanding of the stuff you claim. Well, again, I think I've made it as simple as I can make it. If you don't understand it, I don't. I have no help for you. Um, the forces are pretty simple. The mechanism for magnetism, again, show me. Give me a link to a better description of magnetism. Is, is that asking too much? You think there's much better descriptions of a magnet and how it works. Um, much more simple and, and, and explicitly mechanical and perfectly consistent with what's observed by evidence. Show me that better model. Uh, and when called out for more errors you do, for the errors you do, you, you haven't called out anything. Just talk. No link to this call out you did. Uh, because you are uneducated and arrogant, you just block and ban. Well, obviously, I don't just block and ban. I read your comments. They're clearly rude and obnoxious. And I give you a few chances before I block you. So just lie some more. I mean, it's really not that big a deal, right? You can ask questions, you can interrogate my ideas, but if all you have is personal insults, why should any adult human being accept that crap from some 12-year-old? I mean, you seem to have the mannerisms of a, a punk. Uh, you are ego... ego you are an ego... <coughs> ego maniac. Um, and nobody can take you seriously. So again, that, these are just your words. Obviously, some people do take me seriously. But regardless, I'm, I'm, I don't know, you know, you're making some argument that you've proved this. And you haven't proved anything. You haven't demonstrated anything with any evidence at all. Um, you seriously with a channel like this. Right, a channel that what? That has the courage... You, you link me to the video you want me to debunk because it's such a brilliant video about physics. And I'll go debunk it, because I'm not afraid. I'm not a coward like you people. So, I'll give you one more chance. Uh, you know, but if you can't make an argument, all you can make is insults, you're demonstrating my point. My point is, is you people are all cowards. You don't really know your science. You haven't really thought about any of these experiments in any depth whatsoever. You just preach whatever the Pope tells you to say. You have no imagination whatsoever. Uh, plus meta character. So he's talking to somebody else. I probably should read these in order then. Probably, uh, probably not worth my time, but I might as well. Oh dear, this is this. Another one of these, whatever. All this typing. Just amazing. Uh, you made the prediction that beam splitters don't split the light evenly and that they produce rings. It's not what I said at all. 
I said the cause of the rings is not interference. It is in fact built into the beam splitter itself because it doesn't create two equal beams. So let's illustrate that while we're on the subject. All right, um, but somebody later brings up water droplets. So I'll deal with that as the example. So the point is, is that there's a, a glass surface. And what's happening is if you have stuff on the surface, and in this case, water droplets, but this could be half silver. It just, in some sense, it doesn't matter. Now, there's two things that will happen, right? The water will, the water droplets will end up doing their own thing. In the sense, light will go in, it'll be bent, it'll be reflected back out, and some of it will be transmitted through. Now, the space between the water droplets will act just like as if the water droplets were pieces of silver. There'll be no difference. They'll act just like a material object, and this will essentially be a single slit experiment. And what's going to happen is, is by uh, a probabilistic um, equation, or more precisely based on how many electrons it hits going through the slit, the beam can go any one of these directions. Okay, more likely to go straight through, but all of these are in play. 4%, 8% kind of odds. So the light will tend to be spread as it goes through here. So if it goes through the gaps between the water droplets, it's likely to go through and come out in some sort of angle. Now the light that reflects off the other surface of the glass ends up being a whole other equation. So some of the light will reflect inside the glass internally and there'll be a 4% or 8% chance at every intersection of the light going through. And that again would be an explanation for the ringed pattern. All right. <clears throat> and it would also explain why there's more rings on the outside, but that's a more complex argument. So the basic argument is, is a beam splitter has this layer here. It has either half silver, or if it's a composite, it's made out of a, two prisms. The layer between the two is glued together with a special glue, not just any glue, and that is also creating a diffraction gradient. It's essentially creating little spaces in between the two prisms, which is creating one beam that reflects, doesn't isn't diverted, the beam that goes through, it's transmitted through the beam splitter, is diffracted. That is spread. They're not equal beams. Now if you take just a plain piece of glass at a 45 degree angle, that's your best bet at getting two plain patterns. Okay, half the light, 50% goes through, 50% reflex. So if you want to have two equal beams, beams that equal each other, the plain piece of glass is the best bet. And as I have pointed out in, in the web page I linked to, plus in my own experiments, if you have dirt or moisture on the surface of the glass, you can create a pattern as it reflects off a mirror here and comes back through. It gets wider and wider and you will create a ringed pattern that comes back to this other side and you can completely block this beam and that ringed pattern will still exist. And that's just, the, those are the facts that have, so, you know, I can't help you any further than to explain to you actual factual circumstances that exist. You're claiming that these are not the facts and yet you're claiming they're not facts with no evidence that they're not the facts. These are the things causing the light to do interesting things. It's happening here. And if they did it with a plain piece of glass with no dirt on it, they won't have any interesting effects. So the reason why they don't use a plain piece of glass is because it doesn't do an interesting thing. It doesn't create two different beams. It creates two equal beams. 
and equal beams don't work ironically and that's why your whole analysis of what happens in interferometers is intrinsically and fundamentally flawed your understanding is wrong and this these circumstances prove it to be wrong <sighs> yeah. All right, at one point in the previous video, you compared, to put it nicely, diffraction to refraction by water molecules. See, again, no confusion. I never talked about what happens when the light goes through the water molecules because that isn't the part that's interesting. The part that's interesting is the part, the, the light that goes in between the water molecule, molecules. And that's exactly what was in the paper that has been linked, the 1980 paper. I can't go back to the video right now, but there's a link there. I don't have the link convenient. Um, but clearly, it's, there's a whole paper analyzing all these different effects created by all kinds of different substances on the surface and how you get these, the, the, this causes this diffraction pattern. All right, um, do they make any rings? So again, the water, the refraction isn't what's making the rings. The rings are being created by the diffraction between the drops of water. Um, also, refraction beads violet light more than red light, which is the opposite of diffraction. And again, I didn't analyze how it's a green laser, so quite obviously, um, there is no red light available. Um, it's monochromatic, so any effects wouldn't really be noticeable with a green laser. Um, so, Kortlech rings already have an explanation by interference. So, I point out how the pattern, the exact pattern that also cycles, can be produced without having two beams recombine. I demonstrated it and he's just going to keep asserting that our explanation is the correct explanation even though I've pointed out that I can make the same thing without your complex explanation and I've also pointed out that your beam splitter isn't making a 50-50 equal two equal beams of light one of them is diverging dramatically one of them is not um, fact the dust layer and the mirror in the loose sense create two effective sources. Well, um, any beam splitter effectively creates two sources, so yes, the point is that the two sources are entirely different. It's explained by interference adequately. So again, he's just denying the, the fact that I have, again, the argument always made by physics has been it's an elephant print. It's undeniably an elephant print. It can't be anything else. It must be an elephant that did it. I show up and I point out how I can make exactly the same print without any elephant. And their response is, it's an elephant print. We know it's an elephant print. It's an elephant print. They're just ignoring the statement. They just pretend it hasn't been demonstrated and they're going to just keep preaching their dogma. So it's like Darwin showing up with the theory of evolution and what did the religious kooks do? We don't have to account for any of that. God created those bones. God put the fossils in the ground just to, just to test us, and you failed the test because you fell for the joke. Just absolute rubbish. Uh, 3.28 or whatever. And there's no theoretical mechanism for the interference. I don't know what that's a quote of, but whatever. So I apparently I said that. Um, the links that discuss the quantlet pattern gave the mechanism. Where? What links? There, I have seen no links. None at all. They <coughs> gave an explanation along with precise math. <laughs> oh yes, math again. Um, no, I'm afraid not. You have absolutely no images of anything. You have whatever. I don't know what links these are. Uh, or, nor do I know this precise math that recreated the pattern. So again, I pointed to a lecture by a professor pointing out internal reflections in beam splitters. I've pointed to an article detailing the exact process of 
diffraction by beam splitters and I've done the demonstration on my porch and you're just reciting the dogma pretending that evidence doesn't exist alright it was never claimed oh yes it has been claimed <laughs> that it is not interference I don't know what that is it's never been claimed that it's not interference clearly you keep claiming every on off pattern is interference I'm arguing that every on and off pattern isn't interference. I'm actually arguing that none of the patterns are interference and you're just deluded. Okay? You've all just misunderstood what's happening in the real world. Because photons don't interact with photons. Photons don't split in half and interact with themselves. It's a force. Force bits don't interact with force bits. You're just deluded. But that the situation in which it is made is different. So again, that sentence doesn't even make sense. It was never claimed that it's not interference. I'm claiming it's not interference. I am. <laughs> you, can't, you don't even have our roles correct. I'm the one claiming it's not interference. You're claiming it is interference. I've demonstrated it can be created without any quantum foolery. The same exact pattern. You're the claiming that it has to be quantum foolery. But you're not providing any evidence why it has to be or why it is in the case of your experiment. You still haven't demonstrated how you know your elephant footprint has been created by your elephant. This is why it is claimed that you distort because you can't for your life of your of your argue against because you can't for the life of you argue against not very well written Gee, can't you write a comment? Uh, <laughs> what any other person is saying. Doesn't matter. I, I hear you loud and clear. Okay? You say it's an... Uh, it, the pattern's obviously an interference pattern. You're saying that your device creates interference patterns. I'm pointing out how you're using a beam splitter that creates, quite obviously, two different beams. They're not the same beam. They're nothing like each other, really. One's diverging and one isn't. So first I pointed it out to you theoretically because I discovered it theoretically. I said theoretically these beam splitters can't possibly be working because of the half-silvered mirrors creating diffraction gradient. I point out that the two beams can't be the same. So why are you saying the two beams are the same? Because they're not. And then I proved it on my porch. And then somebody else found the article that shows the whole thing. And you just keep denying that all that happened. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can't make yourself feel like you're saying something relevant by avoiding what is this said. What, what, how am I avoiding your argument? Your argument is our God is God. Uh, even though you have evidence that the God isn't God, that it, you've, been, you've been snookered, you've been fooled by a fake UFO. I'm showing how the fake UFO has Nike sneakers on, and you're saying the Nikes don't matter. Well, you're not explaining why the Nikes don't matter. Regardless, you made the prediction that the beam splitters create rings and they widen the beams. Quite obviously, that's exactly what they do. That's what a diffraction gradient does. It spreads the light. But I already made countless arguments showing that that is patently, absurdly false. What argument did you make? How, what, how, how deluded could you possibly be? Where is your argument? Where is your evidence? that that is false. Where? Amazing statement. I have seen no evidence. Um, through and through. I mean, amazing. Because there are many different circumstances. What different circumstances? There's lots of interferometers on YouTube. To point me to the video where you have some evidence that their beam splitter isn't doing exactly what I'm saying. Diffracting the light. Show me one where they're using a, D, a beam splitter that doesn't diffract light. Show me one. That's where shown in your own video. That there are many different circumstances that were shown in your video. Yes, that's right. And all of them create the pattern. Which means the pattern isn't so fucking special after all. That maybe it has a very common and simple explanation rather than your extraordinary and bizarre explanation. So again, they will not. So, so this comes down to the two-slit experiment and all these experiments. They just will not pay attention to any material explanation or any other explanation for the results. 
you point out that there's another possible explanation and they just don't want to hear it. It doesn't exist. We don't have to account for it. Uh, that was what is being argued. You know, clearly what is being argued is that you're saying you don't have to account for the fact that your pattern is not special and that you can't just say, look, it's an interference pattern. You have to show the interference. You can see in the conversation that that, again, was how the conversation was started. And you, I'm sorry, I never changed anything. And you changed the topic away from this prediction of yours. There's no change. I'm telling you flat out. All right, every one of your interferometer experiments are a fraud. If you're saying the beam splitter is creating two equal beams, it can't do it unless you use a beam splitter that doesn't have a diffraction gradient in it. So show me a beam splitter without a diffraction gradient, and I'll show you you have some honest hope of having two equal beams. The whole premise of the device is to create two equal beams of light. You do understand that, don't you? It couldn't work for the Michelson-Michelson-Morley experiment if the two beams aren't the same. If one of them's spreading, you know what that means. It's traveling more distance, right? You understand that, right? It can't possibly be the same phase if it goes like this and bounces off the mirror and goes like this. These are much longer lines. You do understand that, don't you? Fuck tard. So clearly it can't be used to measure differences in length when the two beams are traveling a different length, theoretically and fundamentally. All right. Um, prediction, okay, and you changed the topic away from this prediction of yours. I've never changed the topic away from it uh, because you have a demonstrably sloppy mentality, or whatever, more just junk conversation. You're not making an argument. Uh, you're incapable of careful thought and distinguishing finer details. I, I'll just leave the viewer to that. You'd have to be a preposterous liar to interpret this conversation as me evading the subject. It's clear who's evading the subject and has no interest in details. You have no interest in answering the simple question. If what I wanted to do was create two equal beams of light, why would I use anything other than a plain piece of glass at a 45 degree angle? Why would I use any other beam splitter than the simplest one that does the job? Answer the question. The answer is, is because the simple one doesn't create the diffraction that you need to create the pattern. Look, I have a fucking beam splitter. That makes sense. Uh, they don't create rings. You say. They split the light evenly. That's what they were designed for. Well, obviously, you only see the rings after you reflect it off the mirror. You have to create enough divergence for it to be visible. So show me your experiment. Show me where you shot the light through the beam splitter, brought it back through, and you didn't get a pattern. Show me that without lenses. Okay, I created my own MM bars. And they were bars because the mirrors are damn near impossible to align with thumbs. Whatever that means. And it was nothing like your result. So again, it's no evidence of this experiment done. Just talk. That's it. Um, so what good is this? I mean, I, I could explain to you how you did the experiment wrong if you want me to explain to you why your results suck. There's, it's probably something obvious, because it really isn't that hard to adjust. I had my mirrors glued to tin cans, and I could line up everything perfectly. Light diffraction actually doesn't follow the square inverse law. I write it backwards. Clever. Uh, and where, where did I say light? Where did, does the inverse square law come into this conversation about light? I mean, that comes into the gravity conversation, right? So are you jumping subjects now? And why would somebody say it, it doesn't? Because they're saying light doesn't have any height, it doesn't have any width. And how do you know how thick a photon is? Where's your evidence that photons are, have no thickness? Because that's the only way the inverse square law can't apply, by the way. Because the light ray has to go through the gravitational field and eat up one of the dimensions, as you would probably say. If something has to plow through the field, it accommodates the gravity. 
So apparently he has changed the subject. Um, so um, gravitational land explanation in terms of space. So this argument, so Einstein not only says space is bent, therefore we can assume that light's in the gravity twice as long and um, you know, therefore you can have twice the effect from gravity because of the time difference. He's also saying he knows light has no height, therefore it can't be hit by more than one graviton. So he knows that gravitons, or whatever the, gra the, the bent space force, is somehow the same size as a photon. So Einstein knows that his gravity force, his bent space, bent space is actually just as high as a photon. That has to be his argument. Because the only way you can say it's not the inverse square law, just the, just the uh, 1 over r law, is you have to assume that the photon is as small as the force affecting it. Because if the force affecting it is smaller, if gravity is smaller than photons, then the inverse square law applies. Uh, all right, yes, yeah, that's enough. I don't think we need to go to the page. The formula is 4gm c squared r, whatever. The radius here is not squared. <coughs> Right, so it's the R, the R rule. You're just saying you're going to divide uh, in, by half instead of quarters. So instead of the inverse square law, meaning half the distance means four times less or more of the force, um, it's only two times more or less because you're, you're only doing one dimension. So you're only, doing, you're only affecting one dimension instead of two dimensions. So no square required. Um, so you wouldn't cut the value in four. So again, that's just your, so your assumption essentially is pointing right at a theory that might argue that if you know bent space is the same thickness as a photon, then somehow bent space is sounding more and more like a force, like a photon, isn't it? It's sounding like a virtual photon, isn't it? Yes, it is. And unfortunately, you just don't have any experiments to prove it because no forces interact with photons except, conveniently, gravity. By your statement, but not by evidence. All right, the star catalog data is the control. Well, again, it's just idiotic. So if you think that's good enough, a synthesized view of the universe taken from different observatories that were not the location of his telescope, and you... You use mathematical formulas to decide what the perspective would look like from the other location. A completely synthetic view of the universe, you're going to make these 0. 0.0003 degree um, um, vari variants. You're going to be able to detect those tiny variances in star charts synthesized. And you say that's a good experiment. Uh, sorry. That's just bullshit. And he used images to the sides away from the sun for reference. For what kind of reference? It's just not a very useful reference, in my opinion. Not at all. Look, the experiment is you take a picture at the eclipse. You take a picture six months later, the exact same star field. And then you compare the two pictures. This is a whole different experiment you're doing. Okay, also taking... The advantage of different images produces the same result as long as the exposure, uh, as, uh, as a long exposure. So I think that's just patently incorrect. That can only, uh, again, demonstrate it. Take low resolution pictures, overlap them, and show how you get more detail. Show me how that ever works in reality. Because in my opinion, there's no chance that works in reality. Okay, all you're going to do is magnify the the biases that exist in the broken, unresolved edges. You'll never get the resolution of the edges. You'll just get the bright spots on the edges. So you'll just emphasize the defects, the brightest bits, and you'll completely eliminate from any possibility of being in the photograph the light bits, the less light bits, the less bright bits. It can't possibly resolve detail doing that. It's 
destroying the level of contrast. Okay, um, uh, it removes the variance. Well, again, it, that only the variance argument only works if it's random and it's not random. Okay, the paper mentioned VLBI. It used for other domains like tracking changes in plate tectonics. Well, this is way out of any reasonable relevancy. And it can track the deflection of things that are 30 degrees away from the sun. Uh, how does that help? Okay, how can you possibly say it just scattered if it tracks countless objects considerably far from the sun? That wasn't the argument, Jackass. The argument is the further away you get to the sun, the less deflection you have. You don't have 1.7 anymore. The further away you go, you got 0.6, and you got 0.3, and then you got 0.2. And when you get down to 0.2, that's 0 0.00003 degrees. It's an incredibly, it's an impossibility that you can do this experiment at that fine, you can measure that fine a, a, a change. It's like me putting 10,000 lines in the sun. 10,000 lines. And saying with those low resolution images, I could resolve those 10,000 lines. I don't even think you could do that. If you take, go ahead, take a picture of the, the lines in the sun. Ten, put 10,000 lines in the sun. And then take low resolution pictures, 10 of them, 20 of them. 500 of them, and then pile them on top of each other and see how many lines you can resolve. Because I'll bet you got nothing. All right. It's not how even a matter, it's not even a matter of if there's deflection. It's a question of at what point go, at what point does it break down? That's certainly not the question. We know those answers. If, you know, in terms of the math dictates what those answers are going to be. The question is, is can you resolve them with low resolution images? So just keep pretending this isn't about the fact that low resolution images is no way at all to do this experiment. It's, it's silly. You have to have lots of stars, so you have a real solid pattern, so you can make lots of comparisons to the one star you're going to, you're going to hope has been lensed. Uh, so again, it's citing the same formula again. The radius here are not squared, so it wouldn't cut the value in four. We've already done that. Yes, and that's only if we accept your assumption that Einstein also understands that gravitons are whatever, bent space particles, bent space influence, it has the same grain, the same resolution, pixel resolution, as photons. So gravity it has a Planck constant size that's the same as photons which like I, I can't ask for a more perfect um, piece of evidence to say well once you would concede that you're basically conceding my point that gravity is a photonic force okay the star catalog data is the control I read all this already how about that will happen something broke down somewhere uh, okay, not even a matter of definitions. Okay, good. So, um, meta character. Elephant Man, do you think quantum theory supports indeterminism? Well, I don't think he's going to answer any of your questions. Or is that a huge mistake? I, I don't, I, this, you know, going into the stupid abstract uh, uh, subject, kind of abstract anyway, of whether there's true random being created by the universe. Like I said, a consequence of Feynman's perception that real randomness exists is that he was basically not a determinist, in a sense. That's the consequence of it, even though he talked as if he was a determinist. So there seems this is one of these wave-particle duality things that they, are, they have no sensible opinion on. They can't resolve their own theory. Theists try to use in, indeterminism in the quantum realm to support free will. Well, clearly a lot of these people are clinging to some sort of... Obviously, it seems like they're very passionate and defensive. So it seems like they must have some sort of metaphysical, religious purpose. And they are more comfortable with the quantum world because it has magic in it. 
uh, don't you think it's just that we don't yet have the technology to calculate where where it is? I think we do have, frankly, plenty of resolving power to see there's nothing that violates cause and effect. Hi, Meta Character. Uh, let's see. Thank you for asking me a genuine question. Uh, yes, he hasn't answered a single one of my questions, so I'll ask it again. Why would a responsible scientist who just wants to create two equal beams of light, why would he not use a plain piece of glass at a 45 degree angle when it's the cleanest way possible to create two equal beams of light? Others will disagree with me. I welcome them to talk about it, but my answer is that I don't know. Well, what a cop out. <laughs> it is possible that there is a deterministic theory like Boham mechanics and well like any mechanics actually <laughs> you have to break mechanics you have to break mechanics cause and effect to create some kind of generator of some kind of effect that doesn't have a cause because we can't rule it out yet well I think we can I don't think we can say we have indeterminism definitively I don't think you're anywhere close to indeterminism that is one thing preventing me from concluding that there is indeterminism. So this is just a complete non-answer. Theist, yes, uh, that's true, and I don't agree with them at all. Okay, I'm not reading the rest of this, because this to me has nothing to do with the subject. Um, let's see, to calculate. That is a possibility, but the question is, does every possibility distribution have an underlying deterministic mechanism? Yes, so he's basically saying, is there causes to effects? Yes, there is. Every circumstance is a real circumstance. There's no evidence that anything other than forces cause matter to move. There's no magical movement. All right, so I didn't know all of this was just rubbish, so big pile of... Uh, philosophical nonsense. All right, but rude comment deleted. All right, so it's the jerk again. Is it true that you and Ken Wheeler are farming a rock band? Okay, so this is not going too far. As for your constant whining that no physicist ever, whatever, Frang, alternative theory, kooks I will engage in a debate with you could could it be that your theory is a laughable joke so you're willing to do debate okay you have a microphone you can do a live room that anyone with a brain and 30 seconds to spare sees it for a disaster in basic logic well like I said I'd love to have the open conversation with you where you're somehow you defend these statements where I get to ask you some questions and you have to fucking answer them or look like an asshole. Okay, I love watching that live stream you did with Jeff Yee and the best part is trying to determine from his face exactly when he starts thinking, what the fuck have I gotten myself into? Well, just for your sake. I mean, I could show you the private messages from Jeff Yee, but he actually personally asked me to watch his videos and he wanted my opinion. So... I wasn't, I'm not the one begging for his attention. You just don't see me doing that, do you? Have I forced Jeff to l watch my videos? No. Did I ask him to watch my videos? No. So, fuck you. Uh, let's see. A disaster. I love watching that live stream. Okay, we already did that. Um, although he was too polite to say anything, of course. Well, I, again... Uh, <laughs> So he's either an attention whore, or uh, he was sincere in the sense that he valued my opinion. You failed to answer any of my questions. What are your questions? I don't see any of your questions. No one responding instead with your characteristic hand-waving and stream of obscenities. Again, what questions? That's just a lie. I'm reading the damn post. I don't understand how you can say I didn't answer some, some asshole question of yours. What question? I mean, if you can't politely phrase a question, like I said, if you're, if you're, this comment is all rude and shit so far. You haven't made a single physics argument here. And how much of that am I supposed to take from you assholes? I say I don't, I shouldn't be taking as much as I am. I shouldn't be wasting anyone who's listening to this video's time. I shouldn't be wasting my time, actually. I should be doing more constructive physics. 
Um, you failed that. Okay, no, no. As for your criticism of mainstream physics, they have been made by people far more intelligent and diligent than you. So again, it just doesn't matter. You point out the single slit experiment, the double slit experiment in photons has the wrong pattern. It doesn't doesn't gradate properly. They don't care. You point out that the beam splitter is creating two different beams of light, one diffracting and one not diffracting. They don't care. It's just, you know, it's just that obvious. That's how dogmatic this is. Has nothing to do with the truth. Has nothing to do with anybody wanting the right answer. It just has to do with a dogma. You're Catholics and you will not accept any other religious theory. Uh, people who made their arguments not with, I don't know, orchestral hand waving. So again, all of this hand waving. You want me to show, um, I could show all of the talking heads because they're all animated, right? So, so I just show, I make funny videos of the green guy especially, right? I mean, he is so, you know, it's like he wants to hump every sentence he says. You can see him trying to hump it on stage. And, <laughs> and you got a problem with me moving my hands? Amazing. Um, well, anyway, uh, whether the mainstream response was adequate or not is irrelevant. Whether the mainstream is accountable for their completely preposterous theories and whether they have the courage to answer criticisms rather than just be applauded. So none of them seem to have any courage to stand up and say, I'll answer your physics questions about why we believe in dark matter or why we believe in entanglement and how we think the evidence is strong. Do any of them do that? No. Zero. The fact remains that debate is conducted with mathematical rigor. So again, debate, we can only debate math. We can't debate function, can't debate how, the causes, what causes an effect. That is not a subject we can touch. We can only deal with effects and their claims of what's causing them. And that's it. There's no other subject. Um, you take your favorite analogy, lawyers defend their claims in court. They do not engage in debate with it doesn't, this isn't about a, a, a court case beyond the fact that there's arguments made. Lawyers make arguments. Where's your argument? Where's your explanation for the questions being asked? Why would I use anything other than a plain piece of glass if what I wanted was two equal beams of light? Answer the fucking question. All right, crazy winos. Some other kind of bullshit. I think we're done with you. Fuck off. All right, elephant puke. If you can't even agree with something so simple as the fact that beam splitters don't create things, then there's no point. Amazing. So a beam splitter can't create a photographic effect, an optical effect. A piece of glass can't create an optical effect. It's not possible. A prism can't create an optical effect. This, this piece of glass can't create optical effects. <laughs> right. That's, this, that's simple physics. That's one of our simple rules. No effects. Nothing affects anything. In a previous video, you talked about how the beam is going through will be expanded. Uh, okay. And you always just left it at that without the follow-up. What follow-up? What follow-up do I need? I've drawn pictures of it, for fuck's sake. Do I actually have to draw it again? They're not the same beam, obviously. If one's traveling, if one's spreading, it travels more distance than the straight line. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, I'm expanded, and you always just left it at that. I never just left it at that. Without any follow-up, what follow-up do I need besides pointing out how that creates all kinds of monkey business? Uh, what were people supposed to think back then? I don't know what that even means. Okay, so you think they create rings and dot dot dot. I don't even know what the how how do I even how do I even interpret this? Quite obviously, since Newton, most scientists are inc incredibly motivated to prove something. They have a lot of bias. 
and that was demonstrated in Eddington's experiment, and it was, in de it was clearly demonstrated by Michelson Morley. They were trying to do something desperately, and so they did, I don't think they did a fair analysis of their own experiment because they really wanted it to be true. They wanted it to be able to do what they hoped it would do, and they really just didn't think about whether or not it's really possible that it's doing that. At some point, you even tried to imply that the MM experiment had its pattern created by the dust. I never said it was created by dust. I said they did have 18 mirrors. <laughs> Clearly, um, any dust on those mirrors would create defects in their pattern. So it is a little bit of a problem, which is patently absurd. Of course, it's not absurd when I've demonstrated how little it takes, just a tiny bit of moisture on the surface of a piece of glass and you get a brilliant pattern. Um, because, as it was shown in your own video, the rings would have been a secondary effect. Okay, he says not centered again. They're perfectly centered. It's two different beams. I, can, I could have put the two beams over each other anytime I wanted to. I was pointing out that if you block one of the paths, the pattern is still there. I, I just can't believe these people could be this stupid. You say it, you, you play, I replay the videotape to point it out. See, there are two different beams. I'm blocking one beam. The other beam's still going through. I block this beam. This beam's going through. You can't understand that, retard? The two beams aren't even aligned. I was pointing out that they don't have to be aligned, and I have a pattern. How could they possibly be recombining to create interference if the two beams aren't even lined up? I'm pointing out I get the pattern without the two beams being associated with each other at all. Oh, amazing. At some point, you even try to imply that the other had the pattern created by the dust, which, okay, no, 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 secondary effect caused by the laser beam. All right, let me see what this says. Uh, which is patently absurd because as it was shown to you in your own video, amazing. You, I have to replay the video a third time? The rings would have been a secondary effect, not centered at the main laser beam. That's just amazing. I, I showed it. They're clearly not some secondary effect. It's the primary beam of one, one leg is creating the pattern. The other leg is creating the pattern on the other wall. They're just two different legs. So the leg that's going this way creates the pattern over here. The leg that's going this way creates the pattern over there. The leg that's going this way creates a dot over here. The leg that's going this way creates a dot over there. I can kill the dot going over there. I can kill the dot going over there. We're, I just You're too retarded. All right, well, anyway. I just, I can't believe how stupid you people are. It's only now that you actually follow up with a concrete point which is, again, falsely premised because those patterns do have a derivation using interference. What does that even mean? How, how do I even make any sense out of that? Which again, falsely premised because those patterns have a derivation using interference. Prove it. Prove that there's interference with one beam, not the second beam. Second beam's blocked and there's a clear pattern. Explain the interference. You people haven't even explained in any honest way whether you really believe in quantum mechanics, that meaning that the photons are really being split into two wave atons, and the two wave atons travel the two different lengths and recombine. You're not even making any sense because there's no other experiment that actually demonstrates that two different photons can interfere with each other. There's only evidence from your point of view uh, that the theory is that the single photon breaks into two entities and it in sense interferes with its own entities. You haven't even been manly enough. You have, don't even have the testicles to even stick to one argument. So what do you think it is? What do you think is happening in an interferometer? Are they a single photon splits into two wave identities? Or do you think two different photons are interfering with each other? Which is not quantum mechanics. Which one is it, fuckhead? Um, let's see. Uh, using, let's see. 
And regardless, so he says regardless to that derivation bullshit, it does nothing to counter the fact that for the MM effect, you need both beams. And again, as I just stated, that's not the point. I'm pointing out how I can create the effect without interference, without recombining anything. Clearly, it's not exclusively an interference pattern, and there's significant doubt that your claim that you're sure it's an interference pattern is now vulnerable because there is no real hard evidence that that's the only way you can create the pattern. You don't have any other proof that it's interference besides your own statement that you know it is. You have no evidence that it is. The only evidence you had that it was an interference pattern is that it couldn't be created some other way. The fact that it can be created another way means that you have to come up with some other kind of piece of evidence because it's no longer an ex it's not an exclusive pattern anymore. You can't understand this. It's not an exclusive pattern anymore. So now you have to explain why you think this pattern is interference and you don't have any evidence to do that with. All right. <clears throat> Which is demonstrated not the case in your videos. Okay, so he's saying he's making a claim. Uh, it does nothing to counter the fact that for a MM effect, you need both beams. Well, in my experiment, I did use both beams, and I did line them up, and it changed nothing. Um, which is demonstrably not the case in your videos. Well, in my videos, it's demonstrably the same pattern, so now it's your obligation, because you can't use pattern exclusivity as an argument. You can't say it's obviously an interference pattern, because it's no longer obviously an interference pattern. At one point in the previous video, you said, yeah, blocking one of the beams removes the pattern because you block the pattern. Face palm. Well, you're, that's what you are doing. The pattern's created the beam splitter. You're blocking it before it goes to the mirror and comes back again. But the pattern's already in the stream before it gets to the mirror, jerk. Idiot. Fucktard. Retard. And quite obviously, the pattern is in both beams, it's just that the opposite beam has the pattern on the two legs. There's four beams all together. There's four things hitting the target. Two on each leg. Idiot. Your theory is incomprehensibly broken. Well, fuck you. You said that the repulsion between an electron and, and another electron depends on the amount of bouncing between the two electrons. Yeah, it's quite obvious. Very good theory. Uh, but that requires there to be a greater density. No, it doesn't. So, so he's this stupid. He's this fucking retarded. So he doesn't understand that if I have two things separated by a distance and I have a ping pong ball that bounces at the, the, a set speed. It never changes its speed. And then I move the two things closer together that the ball is now going to bounce at twice, well, it's four times the speed. I mean, four times the number of hits. So each side will get hit four times more. Each side. The ball is moving the same speed, four times more hits, four times more hits. He doesn't understand that that's real physics. And that the hits are actually the force exactly the same amount of pressure as when it was bouncing this way and only hitting like this, like this, exactly the same power to the hits and there's going to be four times many when I cut the distance in half and he doesn't understand that as a fact because he's a dumb turd wasting my fucking time uh, but that requires there to be a greater density wrong between them relative to the outside pressure wrong again all it has to have is more impacts relative to the other side. It's the number of impacts that decide whether it goes one way or the other. Dim shit. Okay, but that requires there to be a greater density between them relative to the outside pressure, which is reset. It's never reset by anything. Anytime any of the electrons are jiggled or moved to the side, says you. So where do you get that evidence from? Um, because the tons between will escape. They have to move enough for the escape. So you say you know how big electrons are, and you know how big the force bits are. If the electrons are this big, and the force bits are this big, moving the electrons wouldn't necessarily let these loose.
dumbass. You're so attached to your theory. Yes, I'm attached to rationality. And I'm really unattached to your dogma. You're clearly aggressive, petty, um, authoritating. You're just so obnoxiously aggressive, it's clear you must be wrong because you, have, you can't be polite. You can't make a reasoned argument defending any of your mush. All you can do is keep making declarations that you know you're right because your ass told you so. Um, that when it implies that electrons lose velocity, you... Okay, here we go again. You are so attached to your theory that when it, it implies that electrons lose velocity, my theory doesn't imply it. I had to deduce it. Okay, so it doesn't imply it. It tends to say from what we, we know, that's the way it functions. I mean, the two happen to be consistent. The, the idea that you can't create a free electron gun, you know, free space gun, sort of is an indication that somehow electrons can't acquire velocity. But my original theory, electrons still flew through empty space just fine. So I had to figure out that they lose uh, momentum. You reject the evidence against that Okay, so there's evidence against the fact that, uh, that electrons need to have a voltage pushing them or they don't move. And where would that evidence be? So again, so he says, I'm so, so, so let's see, when it implies that electrons lose velocity, you reject the evidence against that. So what evidence is there against that? Where is there evidence that electrons move without a voltage? Where? without a force pushing them. That's what the voltage is, the force. So show me an electron that moves without voltage. And go with it as a uh, dogma, without a, without a voltage or charge. <laughs> anyway, this would fuck up particle accelerator kinematics and it would, and it conflicts with the fact that cosmic particles manage to get to Earth. So again, he says Electrons get to Earth. Cosmic particles, that's not an electron. So do you have evidence that electrons fly from Mars to the Earth? There is no such evidence or we'd be using it as a communication mechanism, frankly. If we could shoot electrons through space, we'd be doing it. Asshole. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're totally wrong here. So, and again, he says, he says some complex thing like, particle acceler kinematics implying that particle accelerators don't rely on acquired velocity they're accelerators do you understand the word accelerator they're constantly accelerating things they're not watching them do velocity they're constantly pushing them dumbass and it conflicts with the fact that cosmic particles managed to get to earth from outer space. So again, you can't make it any clearer, right? I mean, I'm talking about electrons and then he changes the subject to cosmic particles. So he thinks a cosmic particle, whatever that is, is an electron. Then on top of that, you say things can be fixed by making up some internal perpetual motion. Yes, inside of atoms. That's right. A combination, a, a nucleus of a, the helium atom, for example. It has enough pieces in it to create a perpetual motion machine. All right. Um, can be fixed with by making up some internal perpetual motion machine in matter to keep it moving. I mean, holy crap. Okay, so you think it moves just because it moves. Your explanation of what the difference is between this pen moving and this pen not moving. You're saying it's not the space. Clearly, the space didn't make the pen move. The, and the space doesn't make it keep moving. And if it's not something inside the pen, then what is it, asshole? How do the atoms know to keep moving? How do the little electrons, and you think they're spinning, I really don't, but you think they're spinning around. How do they know to spin in a direction? How does the neutron know to, oh, I have to keep going? When there's no evidence that electrons can do that, there's no, no evidence that a proton can do that. Can't make a proton gun either. 
So what's, what's your explanation for velocity? Oh, well, that's right. It's one of the things your physics doesn't account for at all. You just pretend it's just the way it is. Even though they're identical when they're stationary, they're still identical when one of them's moving. There's nothing in the universe that actually changed. When it's moving, the universe is exactly the same as when it's stationary. Nothing physically changed anywhere. That's your theory. I think it's a pile of shit. <clears throat> and you're too stupid to be able to understand how... Uh, that's right, we really don't explain how the little bits know how to move. Uh, so anyway, so that's enough of that. Fuck off. Rude bastards. I don't know what this is. Raw X3 nuzzle or something. Fuck. Well, I think I'll... I'll discontinue his participation permanently. Alright, Sir Isaac Newton, no doubt the cowboy. This is just Chewbacca Endor bullshit. Oh, that's just too interesting. Alright, I see absolutely no point being made by you so far. Well, I don't care. Are you saying that because you can produce some ring pattern on your back porch that this invalidates the MM experiment. I'm saying the theory of the experiment is is that the beam splitter is creating two equal beams, not a beam that's diverging and a beam that's not diverging. Now, if you can't understand how the two beams aren't the same, if one's diverging and one's not diverging, you're really just too stupid for this conversation. So I'm saying, show me how it's possible with a half-silvered mirror uh, beam splitter for you to create two beams that are equal. It can't be done because the half silvering creates a diffraction gradient which creates the divergence that spreads the beams. I explained this in theory months ago. Now I demonstrated it on my porch and you're still forcing me to argue it. Even though I've shown you web pages explaining the phenomenon. I mean amazing! Um, all right, the pattern on your back porch invalidates the MMX because what? Uh, I'm waiting for the part where you explain why your experiment invalidates the results which prove light moves at C in all frames. Well, first off, it doesn't prove any of that shit. Um, and clearly, light moves C everywhere. <laughs> Always. You people are the ones who say it doesn't. Because in your frames, it does move faster than C. And you keep pretending, no, it really doesn't. Just like Einstein's pretending the photon somehow is in the gravity twice as long, even though it's not. <laughs> we'll just make it up. It is, because you say so. Well, if it's in the gravity twice as long, then it must be moving half as slow. And you just pretend it's not. No, it really isn't. Bullshit. All right, uh, to spare the time wasted, um, whatever that is, beggarly imply that MM f forgot to clean their mirrors and splitters. So, again, still arguing as if the phenomenon isn't real. There's no such thing as this, happen this happening. You people really can't understand that dust and moisture will, in fact, create this effect. It does, in fact, happen in the real world. I've demonstrated on my porch, and you're still going to argue this isn't a real problem. It isn't a real issue. There, there's no hope for you people. You, again, I'll ask the question again. If I wanted two equal beams of light, why wouldn't I use a plain piece of glass at a 45 degree angle? The simplest, simplest way to create two equal beams of light. Why would I use something that doesn't create two equal beams of light. If that's what I wanted, two equal beams of light. Oh, that's right, because the experiment will work without the dirt. Clearly, I mean, it's just kind of funny. He's saying, vaguely imply that MM forgot to clean their mirrors. I'm, I'm overtly asserting that using a beam splitter with a half-silvered mirror face is the same thing as dirt. I'm asserting it. And your counter-argument is what? It's not? You're saying the half-silvered mirror doesn't diffract light. I'm saying 
you're proved wrong, you're insipid to think you can defend that position. It's clear it has to diffract the light by established things that are established by experiment. You can't create a small opening and have light go through it without it being diffracted. Can't do that. No experiment ever did that. That's why we can't that's why we can't focus, that's why we can't aim photons precisely. It's for that very reason. We can't aim photons precisely for the very reason we can't make a slit that they can go through and come out straight. You people are just so full of shit. All right, use the false premise that his rings don't have an explanation by interference. Again, if you're going to argue there's interference, you have to explain where it is then. Explain where two photons broke in half and interfered with themselves in the experiment. And the more you, you attempt to do that, the more you're just going to prove my point that the interference for your experiment has to happen in the beam splitter. All right, ignore, because that's the only place it can happen, asswipe. If I'm blocking one leg of the beam, how can the other leg interfere with itself? It certainly can't interfere with the other beam. And now you have to explain how it interfered with itself. Ignore or sometimes mislead all the signs that these come from different circumstances. Again, I'm arguing it's the circumstances are only different in the sense that the, it's the, the marginal setup differences. But clearly it's the same pattern. And that he hasn't gotten anywhere close to a genuine MM scenario. Yes, I haven't used one of their half-silvered mirrors. <laughs> right. I haven't used a diffraction gradient uh, explicitly. I've used ones created by moisture, dust, and I used one that was a, a linear diffraction gradient. It, was, it wasn't um, randomized. Then continue to fail to understand how the entire experiment works. So again, he's, their assertion has always been that the beam splitter creates two equal beams. I've demonstrated that theoretically it's impossible. I've done the experiment proving that that's not what happens. And they keep asserting that's what they did. That somehow the experiment is still legitimate even though the two beams aren't even. They're not the same beam. They're not equal beams. They're fundamentally different beams. One's diverging, the other one isn't. It's a fact. And it's a fact that catastrophically breaks the theory of the experiment. Despite the <laughs> conspicuous noises coming from his direction and such. I don't know what this means, but anyway. Then continue to fail to understand how the entire experiment works. So again, their, their experiment has been exposed to have a catastrophic flaw in that it doesn't create two equal beams. I've proved it doesn't create two equal beams. It's their obligation to show the beam splitter creating two equal beams with a half-silvered mirror. And I'm going to argue it's impossible. You'll never have anybody prove that because it's impossible. Because it clearly is a diffraction gradient. It's clearly going to diffract the light. So you're going to lose every time. I'm not even kidding. And unironically wonder whether or not he even has conscious experience sometimes. Well, whatever. I mean, all these little digs, uh, I, you, these, are the, these are little pussies, little flapping vaginas who are afraid to even put their faces on their crap, and they'll talk shit. So, yeah, you can go to fuck yourself and die, get cancer soon, hopefully. Likewise for you, Isaac. Get deader than you already are, fuckhead. You piece of garbage. Alright, so that's enough. So, I don't think we need any more draw. I'll do one more drawing just because I'm here. So, I'll just draw a divergence one more time. I'll just draw the theoretical point that you assholes just can't undo. It's just a fact. And you're, you're fucked by it. Your, your whole theory is fucked by it. Okay. So, the simple argument is that they have a beam splitter. And it's got a pattern of silver on the back that's randomized, but we'll just make it a little... The, the net effect is 50% is, is, is silver, 50% is open spaces. And the open spaces are going to be microscopically small. They're going to be very small. Um, 
the human hair thicknesses to maybe the thickness of a toenail or something. Um, that kind of small. Little tiny holes. Different sizes of little holes. And the smaller the hole, the more likely the light will diverge when it goes through. So when the light comes through and it goes in between those little gaps, each time it does, it'll go one of these angles. And the smaller the hole, the more likely it is that it goes a, a harsh angle. And so that's the light going through the beam splitter. The light that reflects off the beam splitter, uh, well, I don't have the angles right, but it doesn't really matter, uh, <coughs> is going to hit the silvered mirror and it's just going to be angle in, angle out. So there won't be any effect to the light that hits the silver. It doesn't diverge at all. Every single bit of light that hits the mirror comes straight out at a 90 degree angle from impact. And this is your other beam. So this beam is going to be confined. It's not spreading at all. It's parallel light. This beam is from the from its leavings is going to go, it's going to start spreading. So essentially it's going to diverge. And then when it hits the other mirror, it's still going to diverge because these angles still exist. And so it's going to diverge coming back. And if you take that all the way back past the light source and everything else, you'll see the perfect pattern of the Michelson-Morley pattern, the interferometer, the classic interferometer pattern. And that's exactly how it's created. But clearly, the two beams, this one stays parallel, and this one diverges. And sorry I didn't draw them coming at the same angle, but that shouldn't have, that shouldn't have messed you up too much. So, uh, to say it another way, to draw it another way, waste another piece of paper. Um, uh, how, do I want, how do I want to point this out? Um, right, so if I draw the experiment, here's the light going through. So the light, this is the light source. So the beam goes in and one beam reflects. And it's going to hit a mirror and come back. And it doesn't diverge until it goes through the beam splitter this time. So they always ignore this coming back. So this is the one they care about. And this is where the mirror, the silver is on the mirror. So the first time it went through, it reflected off the silver. So it didn't diverge. And then when it comes back for the last leg, that's where it diverges. The other beam is going to go through. It's going to diverge immediately, the first going through. Come off the mirror, come back, still diverging. And then it's going to diverge, it's going to reflect off the mirror this time, so it's going to diverge one more time. So it's, it's gone, its entire path, it's gone this way, back, and this way, all diverging where this beam only diverges the last little length, and that's it. So this one's been diverging for the whole distance. So in the Michelson-Morley, that means 18 mirrors. That means it bounced off these 18 mirrors diverging each time, spreading more and more and more. And that's the facts. And I haven't seen anybody rationally dispute that as the facts. Not one reasonable explanation for how there's no other possible explanation when you're using a half silvered piece of glass. If you put half silvering on it, there can be no other explanation. By, qu by the laws of quantum mechanics by Heisenberg's rules, 
by all of the, the, by the whole basket of rules established by quantum mechanics. There can be no other explanation. All right, enough.